our tech is designed by soulless people who, in my opinion, if you think about like a Facebook, we all know Zuckerberg don't have the personality. To, I'm not even talking about the looks right now. I'm just talking about the full development of person to go out. Now he married, got kids. I'm like, Ugh, how? How? But what I'm saying is they are also the leaders of the, you know, they're the, the shadow leaders. Do you know what I'm saying? We got our government and then we have these tech billionaires who are Elon Musk. Good example. How many babies he got out of what? Like, dude looks like a frog on two legs. And I'm like, and then he's got plastic surgery, hair plugs. Like, you don't look like you look, but you walk around like you got swag. You have no swag at all. And but somehow. We've given him swag. Y'all gave Donald Trump swag. Rappers, you gave him, you gave him swag. He had none. Look at it. I mean, just like, oh, this. So I was walking, going, how many CEOs, disgusting human beings, but because they have position and power and money, are able to, you know, in their minds even trick themselves into thinking they are. Oh, I'm cool. I'm. You're none of those things. People are lying to you because they they want whatever you can give them. And then I was landing on Russell Simmons. This is where I'm going. Tanya, oh. this is where I'm going. Uh-oh. Yep, I am. I'm going Uh-oh. somewhere today. Uh oh. Early days, spacey teeth, not cool, corny, can't just be weird, just strange. But person. hustle. This is a man who. I'm, had I'm not hustle. saying that they're not smart or industrious or. Any, I'm talking about the the human thing, the thing that makes you want to hang out with people. It's really not about their money or their prestige or their hustle. It's usually like there's something in people's personality that makes you want to be around them that they have none of, right? Let me tell you, so what? One of my smartest friends in the world, I'm not naming any names. When Who we were it? growing up, no, I can't name her. She's famous. She decided she was going to marry a rich producer or director. And I watched her date just the scummiest. Like, that was her priority. She was very clear. She did not want to work. There were things she wanted to do. And so I watched her date a whole cadre of people. And 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 she, and that exactly what she did. So I think that there are people out here who that is really what they set their mind to. I don't want to work. I want to marry someone who's going to pay the bills. And that's it. I don't care if they sleep around. I don't care what they do as long as my bills are paid and I can shop. Okay. No so, we, like the, the, and that used to be not the norm. 866-801-8255. It feels like now it might be more the norm. And I, I'm saying this because I'm like, when did we leave space for people? And, and, and I feel like it becomes like, that's why Trump is so aspirational because there's a whole lot of people that don't want to work, work on themselves. And if he can do it, and look at it. He got Melania. You know, like I think about these, these hillbilly ass little white guys that have nothing going on for themselves. But this trash of a human being can be president. And he got Melania because it's usually about whether it's the 100 virgins. Like there's an obsession with. I, I, I can't have any woman I want if I have money. As opposed to you developing yourself as a person. And then guess what happens? Attraction happens. You know what's sexy? Full development. I promise you. It is sexy as hell to be around somebody that is strong and confident in who they are as a person and developed. You do you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Have you met any of them? No, I have not. (laughs) Okay, and most of the ones that I have met, they want don't want to be with their equal. They want to be with a girl who's going to be a pillow and worship them. Well, then they're not fully developed. Then we're not talking about the same thing. And I have not met many people who are fully developed. But I've I'm met looking. some men that I just love. They're smart, they're talented, they're rich, and they they but want then that's, a, that's an insecurity because if you can't be with someone that's your equal or even smarter than you, like I crave smarter. I crave smarter. I, I crave think women do. I don't think men do. Hmm. Men want to be worshipped and they want to feel like they are giving you things. Jesus. One of my friends married into a $300 million family. And you know what she said the end of her marriage was? That she was an artist and she had a love for her art and it fulfilled her. And her husband was jealous of the fact that she had something that he didn't give her. <laughs> okay. Wow. Damn. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. So I was, I was, um, I finished watching on the record yesterday, 
and I said I was going to wait because, you know, you're you've been in many different circles and spaces. And I, you know, uh, admittedly, you know, I've had a couple of bosses hit on me in my lifetime and I'm not, and I and I don't fit the description. So so that's why I know it can happen to anybody. Right. There's <laughs> no description. That. That's what I'm saying. So there's I'm not, no but, description. But there is a description. There's a particular type that that Russell Simmons and in this case, L.A. Reid, who's also in this um, on the record. You know, there's a type that they like because it's, it's, there's also this kind of anti-blackness that we are inculcated with. It is indelibly etched into our psyches epigenetically, right? So you have so, – so if you look at all of the women that Russell allegedly, because he has not been convicted, preyed upon, but his wife and his daughter gathered him up on on his ex-wife and Kamora, who he's with at 16, is a certain kind of look. You know what I'm saying? skin tone, hair texture, all of this. And I'm thinking about even that is pathology on some level, right? There's something really sick about that. I was, I didn't realize that Jenny Lummett, um, and I think, is that how you sit? Sydney, Jenny Lumet. Sydney, Lumet. Sydney, Sydney Lumet, his daughter, uh, Lena Horne's granddaughter is Jenny Lumet. Mm-hmm. Lena Horne. She's one of the victims of this, you know. Yeah, I, I was that like, one. Lena Horne's granddaughter, dude. Drew Dixon, who I, I just imagine how incredible she could have been. I mean, she already gave us, I mean, her, her discography, you know, the things that she helped produce, including you're all, uh, you know, Method Man and Shorty. You would, like that was her genius, putting Method together with Mary and that song to this day, classic hip hop, right? Stunted, left the business. This man raped her. And he gets to walk around like nothing. And I, pop, you know, again, I should have been dialed into this. Um, Oprah was one of the producers, but then Oprah was catching catching them bricks because of Michael Jackson and all the other stuff because it seemed like she was doing too much. So she backed out at some point. She had Ava DuVernay look at it, and there was some inconsistencies. Let me just say this. Anybody that is a victim of sexual assault, rape, violence, trauma, you're going to have some inconsistencies. Your personality might be a little damaged. You might be presenting as somebody that's got some troubles does not negate that these things have happened to you. As a matter of fact, they might actually confirm that these things have happened to you. There's a show on Broadway right now called Prima Fascia with the woman from Killing Eve. And she played- Jodie Comer. Yeah, with Jodie Comer. And she played yeah. a prosecutor, I mean, a defense attorney who defends people who've been accused of sexual assault. And it starts and it's so funny. And she tells how she does it and what she does. And she's like, you know, she's never lost a case. And then she has an affair with one of her fellow lawyers and he rapes her. And she has to go through what she's put other people through. And what she ends up saying is this, this, that the whole law is just wrong around sexual assault because every other crime is a crime against a piece of property. This is a crime against your being. And the law cannot uh, even assess what happens to your mind, your spirit, your soul as a result of this. So all of these things about what is reasonable, what is logical, no longer apply when your actual being is what has been, you know, assaulted. This documentary takes us to Africa and back. I remember sitting um, in my in my parents' home watching Anita Hill testify. I remember that like it was yesterday and I believed her and I was as a little girl shocked and horrified that Clarence Thomas would be sitting and I didn't have any of the knowledge I have today would be sitting on a Supreme Court in the seat of Thurgood Marshall with all of this and and Joe Biden sitting there interrogating and it's all of these men interrogating this woman about something they didn't even call all of the witnesses because there were more right Joe Biden wouldn't let them in they were there yes Biden would not let those other witnesses testify And I'm not saying it's to undermine his presidency. I'm telling the tr- the truth should set us free. Let's let's have the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna hold my nose and vote, because I am. Exactly. But, but he- we have to because in order for these things never to happen again, we have to talk about them in in polite company, polite company, out in public, assess it, sit with it for ourselves to see where we might have you know ignored some things i'm gonna raise my hand where we might have overlooked or shaded the story in our own minds so we wouldn't have to deal with the truth that you knew underlied all of this right so 
this is what I'm saying, uh, Tanya, why I'm bringing it up, because I feel like, you know, beyond me too and all of that, because the hashtags to me, just like BLM, take away from the daily trauma that people have to somehow get up every morning and go out and live a life where people may mm-hmm. not believe you, where they may even look at you like you're a slut or something, you know, because you might have had consensual sex and then got raped. Like people can't even fathom that. Like this right. was consensual this day, but on this day I didn't want to do it, and you took it. Or this hour later, it was right. the, it was consensual the first time, but when you wanted right. to do it again, I wasn't down with that. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. So I just you know I, I I was wondering, not really wondering, because I imagine you you've run into some things, you've seen some things, yeah, you've seen some things, and, and probably had some things happen to you. Mm-hmm. I, if if little me had some some things happen, you know, I little physically had to, but I'm a physical, you know, I'm I'm physically, you know, strong. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm five ten. You're like I can handle myself physically. Ain't nobody just, you know, you ain't just you. You got to have a weapon, and even yeah. then, it's gonna be really painful. But, but I'm not saying that to say anything other than, damn. I, I, I wonder I, if I were five one, five three, you know, hundred pounds, and I had to navigate the, the treacheries I, of. I I was in on many of the 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 beginning meetings of the Me Too movement at the unions with all the biggest celebrities in Hollywood. And one of the things that, you know, when they would come up with their solutions and, oh, we'll have people sign this and we'll have people read this. And they were applauding themselves and so happy. And they didn't like me very much because I kept saying, but, you know, I, I can read all those things. I can sign all those papers. But I am a person for whom when I get sexually assaulted, I freeze. I have no language. I completely dissociate. There's just a body there with no human being in it. And someone can do what they want. What is it going to do to me? Because in the moment of it happening to me, what I read, what I signed is is of no use to me. And that was like, oh, right. That's that's one of those problems that you can't solve with a, a, a new a new committee and a new form or something. And, um, you know, that's a reality. More importantly, I mean, if you think about how our laws are made and who's judging and how, you know, it's always I'm listening to this book again and they're talking about motherhood and Dr. Spock had like the best selling book. And one of the ladies remarked, isn't it interesting that a man who would never understand child you know, birth or rearing as a mother has the best selling book on advice on how to do it? You know, this is kind of the weirdness of living in a world that makes no sense. And nobody's put up a church figure to say, hey, 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 hey. Hey, <laughs> why are we doing this? Why are we following? This makes no sense. Because uh, women were property at the turn of the last century. There's another documentary out called Brainwash, Sex, Camera, and Power. And it is an, an analysis of 100 years of filmmaking. And what they do is they show you from the lighting, from the way the thing is framed, from who gets heard, how everything about our cinema, and even when women make movies as directors, Women are made to be to not have a voice. Their bodies are fragmented. They are made to be passive, um, either drugged or dead, objectified sex objects. And this is what we have been fed for the hundred year plus years of cinema, Mm -hmm. that we are just these objects to be acted upon, that when men are shown naked, they're always in action or they're doing something. But women are just a body part or just a passive laying their thing or a voiceless thing that that's what our cinema has made us be. Well, I was thinking uh, in the, in reference to an LA Reed or a uh, Russell Simmons, who get, again, have not been convicted of anything, but have been accused widely, both of them. You think about our music, you know, you think about our judicial system, our, our legal system, you know, you think about our politicians predominantly who are making the laws in your city, who are the mayors who, you know, and so how are laws shaped through the lens of somebody, but then you think about what shaped them and you think about 50 years of hip hop we're celebrating, right? How much of that hip hop was shaped by people who are not just fully formed, but are predators and they're creating music over a beat. And I, and those of you who didn't listen to the show yesterday, please go on demand. Cause I'm not going to repeat. Cause I can't, you know, that was the stream of consciousness yesterday. So it just off, off the rip, but you can go listen on the app 
on demand to what I said about the music industry, but I just think about the generations of men and women who have, you know, bought into this. Even uh, Chris Rock had that uh, joke where he was like, you know, you're in the club and then that Ludic- I think it's ludicrous song comes on. It's talking about skeet, skeet, all the, you know, skeet, 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 little John. Thank you. Look, look at me. I don't even know. Thank God. Cause I don't think I ever danced to that skeet, skeet song, but you know, women out there being skeeted on and you're okay with it. Like nobody's like, Hey, 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 there'll be no skeeting on me on a dance floor without my permission. All right, let's go to the phones. 866-801-8255 is the number. Um, the fellas that hung up, call back, <laughs> the three of you, and we'll take Vernon in Indianapolis. Uh, welcome to the Karen Hunter Show. Hi. Hey. Uh, first of all, I enjoy your show tremendously. Um, I just want to uh, uh, register this thought. Uh, 85, 90% of what's been said, I'm in total alignment with. Uh, let's be careful, though, about uh, stereotyping. Uh, and the suggestion that, that that men are not interested in women of intellect, uh, but rather those that would stroke their egos, is too broad of a generalization. Uh, is it though? Because it, 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 you you you're classified as stereotyping. Um, what would you say the percentage of men that prefer women who are as intelligent or more intelligent? Vernon, in your experience, because this is all anecdotal, exactly. I could go in and get some stats, but I'm not because even statistics, <laughs> statistics can be manipulated in your experience as a man on this planet. What's been the percentage? I'll, I'll tell you like this among men of intellect. No, I'm asking you. Don't don't no, you not, have lived a life. Well, well, let me put it. Let, let me put it like this. There probably is a, a smaller percentage of men that um, uh, that find intellect uh, as being sexy, as being attractive. But you know what? Can can we not say that about women too? Uh, women will say, oh, I, I want someone with this great personality, someone who's very thoughtful, somebody who uh, is, is smart. And if he's ext- matinee idol handsome and, and uh, has money and, and a car, uh, all of our, not all of our, but but often those standards that we purport when when people ask us and we're filling out the survey, all of a sudden get kicked to the side. Well, you were changing the subject. You talking about is. oranges, but we were talking about apples. So we're I'm talking about my experience as a as a very beautiful, successful, uh, independent woman who has made a a practice of dating and seeking marriage have dated dozens of men across 35 years have pursued men specifically who I felt were in my ilk. I don't think you have a single experience as a woman in, in, uh, in relationship with dating a man. I have literally had men tell me, many men tell me, this is just too much work. I don't want to work this hard. <laughs> Burning. Listen, so I feel like you took it personally. I said I made a comment yesterday about somebody's head being big. And then I got an email about somebody who was triggered by that. And I, so let me apologize to all you big head people out there. I, I didn't mean that I'm not it's trying a sign to, of stardom, know. though. They say that's what, that's what I said. Head. All the all of the people on TV got big heads, including Tanya Pinkins. You got a big ass head. That's OK. That's what it's great for the camera. Oprah got a big head. You know, big heads are powerful. You know, I was making fun of Brett Bear in particular because he's on Fox and I'm trying to undermine what they're doing. But they apparently are doing some things I need to pay attention to. But that said, um, you know, let's not get triggered by the personal. You know, you, Vernon, may be an evolved man that wants a woman as intelligent or more intelligent. That's you. But I think we're not wrong <laughs> as yeah. I don't think I'm saying something. Right, account of the people I know, which men and women I know in long-term relationships where they are equals. Jesus. I, I was gonna say, we are usually settling. We are usually settling. We don't want to be alone. We're usually settling. We don't dare what I meant. And 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 to that point, you know, I've I've seen a lot. I've I've had, you know, because I fortunately or unfortunately have a lot of male friends, and you know, they will be with women for the, you know, they they're good with the kids. They, you know, and then they will be bother around on the side. Me. Yeah, they let me. I'm like, but you talking to me? Yeah, because I can't talk to my wife. 
okay, that's a problem. Why'd you marry somebody you can't talk to? Because I want to have my house be nice and I want my kids taken care of and I want to know where she is. She's a pillow. I want to have my pillow to come home to and then I'm going to go out in the, in the streets and do what I want to do. And I know a lot of them. Yeah. And, you know, I, yeah. I studied with the dating doctor of Hollywood, Dr. Pat Allen. Of course. And who, who is this? Why would you study with them? Because I was trying to figure out how to get a man. And the things she taught <laughs> Wait, me what? were like- Why isn't this film somewhere? What? They were we like- a documentary on you. They were like Houdini tricks. You know, where you go, how you act. Oh my goodness. When I did what Dr. Pat Allen asked me to do, I would be in the cigar bar and the men, they couldn't wait to schedule the date. But it, it, it involved being very passive, smiling- not asking questions, answering very simply and smiling. And since she said, you got to stroke them, you got to stroke them. I ended up marrying one of them. Whenever I would just fall back into being myself, I'd have to get him on the phone with her and she could get him back into shape. I thought it was something you did to get them, but you could then be yourself. No, 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 no. That's who you got to be forever. She's like, you know, if you want to get paid, you got to keep your body going and you just got to look good. If you want to get laid, you got to have the money to buy the person. And that can be a man or a woman. So a woman with a lot of money can buy herself a beautiful young man. And so can a man with a lot of money buy himself someone who is beautiful. But she considers all relationships a transaction. Mm, Somebody wants to get paid, someone wanting to get laid. Well, I, I think that there are That's the nature of, of relationships prior to 150 years ago, when love came into okay. it, it was always well, about we, property dowries. People still have that, dowries. That is true. That Bell is true. Their daughters, that is true. you know, that is true. The idea of marriage for love is a very new concept in the history of human beings. And I think we don't even know how to define it. A lot of us. So, you know, anyway, I, I brought it up, not for any of that other than to, you know, somebody that has been in Hollywood for at least 20 plus years. Um, I figure you have set, seen some things. And I was just thinking about all of these documentaries now coming out. And what do we do with the information once we once we have it? You know, I think we should assess it um, and and not allow people to bow, you know, browbeat the folk that are producing it. I know um, surviving R. Kelly. And I, I know Tarana Burke got like death threats. And I'm I'm saying to myself, like you are so angry and bothered with people producing the evidence and talking to people who have been harmed, but you don't have that energy for the harmer, for the predator at all. And you're defending them to the detriment of the women who are coming forward. That just doesn't make any sense to me, but here we are. But isn't that our culture? We have judges. What we have judges, our Supreme Court judges with lifetime, uh, you know, jobs who get to decide whether they've behaved unethically. 